Friday the 13th film scheduled for an October release has been cancelled. But that's old news, right? I mean, you guys know that. If you don't, why are you watching this video? But the awesome people over at BloodyDisgusting.com have actually gotten their hands on the script and they've revealed some details which kind of gives us a better idea of what the story would have been. Shout out to Bloody Disgusting. A few of our videos have actually been on their website before. We went ahead and put the link in the description below if you want to check out this full article, or you can just keep watching this video. Thanks to some photos and footage from the original films and my crappy crude animation. I kind of did it fast for you guys just to get it uploaded quickly. I want to see kind of what we would have seen on the big screen in October. There are some things about the script that I like, and there are some things that I don't like. Now we'll get to that later, but first, let's check out the story. So the film would have opened at Camp Crystal Lake in 1977, with two counselors off making love. Okay, I've kind of seen this before, but hey, off to a good start. But this time, instead of Barry and Claudia, it's actually Jeff and Sandra, which is a pretty cool homage to part two. Alright, so these two counselors are off making love in the woods and all of a sudden they're startled by a big masked hooded figure. It's It's got to be Jason, right? So the hooded guy is going to chase them to what has been described as kind of a watchtower out in the woods. Ah, kind of like wrong turn. <laughs> But on their way up, the killer is actually going to get a hold of Jeff and cut his foot. Okay, kind of like Hostel. <laughs> Jeff falls to his death, and the killer then gets to the top, throwing Sandra off to her death. And that's your opening scene. Two counselors at Camp Crystal Lake making love. They actually run up to the watchtower and fall to their deaths. Not bad. It's then revealed that the masked figure is not Jason, it's actually his father, Elias. Mind blown, just, whoa! And the first third of the story is actually Elias' story. He's described as a larger, bigger man, he's the camp's park ranger, and he's actually responsible for killing five people. Really, really crazy to include Elias, Really, really crazy to have him kill five people, and he's actually the main killer in the first third of the film. Didn't see it coming, would have been really cool to see, but of course, as we all know, if you're a Friday 13th fan, Elias has to die, and that's where the story then goes for the second third of the film. Pamela actually kills Elias. Now enter Pamela, who is still the cook at Camp Crystal Lake, who gets cheated on by Elias, who gets beat by Elias, and she actually kills Elias. Now, it doesn't say how she kills him. We can only hope that it was a machete death. All right, now let's talk about Jason. Now, Jason is a little bit different in this film. This film starts in 1977, and Jason is 16 years old, so they fucked up the timeline and his birthday and everything else, but whatever. He's a little deformed, a little bit more deformed, in this story than normal than we're used to seeing. They actually describe Mrs. Voorhees using a feeding tube on him and him wearing some type of medical mask to hide his face. As far as main characters go in the story, we're gonna have Steve Christie. That's right, the owner of Camp Crystal Lake from the original Friday the 13th makes an appearance and his two daughters as well, Annie and Mary, and one of their boyfriends, Barry. Again, dropping name references to the original Friday the 13th series, which is really cool. Steve Christie, Annie, uh, and Barry. Really, really cool. There's a lot of other name references and kill references in the story, and I think that's really cool. A lot of what we didn't see in the 2009 film, so I think that's really, really cool. Now, a huge scene in the story is that we actually get to see Jason drown. Now, it's going to take Mary... Annie and their boyfriend Barry and probably some other kids and they're going to invite Jason along on a boat with them and now the story actually says that they're tripping on acid they probably should have just stuck to smoking a doobie but they're all out on the boat they're going to play a prank on Jason and Jason is going to accidentally fall over and drown. One of the characters actually has a camera with them and they're going to be filming the whole thing. 
Yeah, they're actually going to be filming Jason's death, and you can kind of see where Paramount wanted to work in the found footage angle. Um, kind of cool. It, it, it could have been cool if shot correctly, maybe if they didn't do it like Halloween Resurrection did. You can definitely see how they wanted the found footage in there, though, and, uh, and I feel like they worked it in there, maybe. It, it may have made sense. Now, the characters of Annie, Mary, and Barry are all going to cover it up, all going to lie about it, and just kind of say it was an accident and go on with their ways. Ah, like I know what you did last summer. Now the story fast forwards to 1980, and just like the original Friday the 13th film, Mrs. Voorhees' killing spree. She's actually going to find the videotape of Jason drowning, and that's what's going to send her into her rage, and she's going to kill about three to four people. Now they kind of change the mythology of Mrs. Voorhees a little bit, I'd say. Mrs. Voorhees just, she just knew that the counselors were off making love and that they weren't watching Jason. This one is kind of like, she finds the tape and that's what sends her into her rage. So, a little different, I don't know, I guess we would have had to see how it really played out, but... Mrs. Voorhees is going to battle it out with Annie on the beach, and, yep, you guessed it, she actually gets beheaded by a machete. So very cool that they kept that in there. Now, Jason watches the whole thing go down, and that's what's going to send him into his rage and start his killing spree. The last third of the film is Jason's story. He then finds what's described as a yellowed hockey mask. So we're going a little bit more of a Jason Takes Manhattan hockey mask. So the weapons that Jason used in the story were a meat cleaver, a tent stake, his bare hands, knives, a machete. He actually kills seven counselors and a rampage, similar to what we saw in Freddy vs. Jason. There really wasn't too much details given with the kills rather than just what weapons were used, but still pretty cool to see that some of the weapons were referred back to the original series and the original kills. Finally, Jason and Annie are going to battle their way back to the lookout tower from the beginning of the film, and in that tower, Annie is actually going to find Elias' journal, which is going to say things like, kill him before he's born, and kill him before it's too late, he's a monster, giving insight that Elias kind of knew Jason was going to grow up to be this crazed maniac. Annie then finds some of Elias' old clothes in a, in a bin in a locker and dresses up as Elias to trick Jason. But Jason don't fall for that shit too long and he actually chops down the tower. Annie falls to her death and dies. So there's your surprise twist ending. Annie is not the main character, it's actually her sister Mary that survives. And she actually gets away, and they don't do anything to Jason. Jason just kind of retreats back into the woods. That's right, Jason doesn't actually die in the film. He actually gets away, retreats back into the woods. Mary gets away to safety, and we kind of just pan out to a tree overlooking the lake. And in the tree is Mrs. Voorhees' head. Alright guys, and that was your story. That is what we may have seen on the big screen in October. There's some things that I like, there's some things that I didn't like about it. I feel like maybe I've seen that movie five or six times. Like I said, it felt like maybe, ah, I know what you did last summer. Oh, the Watchtower from Wrong Turn. Which was totally cool, because the whole time that I watched Wrong Turn, I was like, wow, that is cool. That should be in a Friday the 13th film. Like, Jason should chop that fucker down. So kind of cool that that was in there. The whole mask thing, I didn't really care for. We don't need to know why the killers wear masks. We don't need to know why they kill. I don't need to know about their childhood. They just kill. It worked in the original films. Make it work now. Michael Myers, the Rob Zombie Halloween, you know, oh, it's my mask. I don't care about that. Chainsaw Masker, the beginning, Leatherface, he kind of had the deformed face, so he wore the mask, and, the, and they, oh, they always give us reasons to why they wear masks. I don't need a reason. I think the film would have been really, really cool for a part 13. I don't know about the three killers. It was kind of a, a thirds movie. We had Elias, we had Mrs. Voorhees, we had Jason. For the casual fan, that may have been difficult to pick up on. For the diehards like me, for you, hopefully, would have been really, really cool. A lot to take in, though. Was it a remake? Was it an origin story? I, I don't really know what it was. If it was a part 13, then I take it as a sequel, and I have no idea because they completely changed the dates. 
Very, very interesting. Not sure how it would have fit in. I think it would have been a badass film. I think it would have been a better film than 2009. I know, I'm crazy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think it really depends on how it was casted. I think if they would have got a really good Elias, they would have got a really, really good Jason. I mean, one thing that I really, really liked and enjoyed about the story um, that I always enjoy about remakes, reboots, retellings, newer films, is when they work in um, kind of homages back to the original films by names, locations, and kills. Really, really thought that it was cool Steve Christie was in the film. I, I definitely want to know more about Steve Christie. Was Annie his daughter in the original? That could have stirred up some things. Elias wearing the hood mask. Was Elias the killer in the original part two? Maybe that's why Jason looks different in three and four. You know, he's bald. And it really could have stirred up a lot more and it really, really messed up the timeline a lot more. I can't be too harsh on it because it didn't get made and it's just a script. Guys, don't get confused though. Friday the 13th film franchise actually just uh, had a big thing on the Friday the 13th 3D script that came out. Now this was like two or three years ago. This is what Paramount would have made if they made a film in 2000, I believe 15. Completely different scripts floating around. Don't get confused with that. And definitely let us know what you guys think in the comments. There is tons, tons of things to say in your guys' opinions and what they should and shouldn't have done. As always guys, thanks for watching. Check out all of our other videos and be sure to hit the subscribe button because we got a lot more coming your way. And of course, hit us up in the comment section. We want to know your thoughts on what we would have seen in October with Friday the 13th this year. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see y'all later.